Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. She uses that soul to create le uh, lemures. <laughs> lemurs? <laughs> One or the other. Both of them. <laughs> it's, it's fine, it's the same. It is today's. Today's prompt. Yes, today's Ornament. prompt is orange. It's like a month later. Oh. <laughs> One minute! No! So much for watching. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for joining us on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are painting Warcry Minis. We are. Yeah. We are. From so, Games Workshop, right? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, Warcry is the uh, the most recent of the skirmish games that Games Workshop has released. This one's for uh, set in the Warhammer Age Sigma okay. universe. So the crazy mortal realms, um, which are incredibly high fantasy <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and in incredibly vast, and there is so much going on that pretty much anything you can imagine can be going on somewhere. Uh, so, but for Warcry, there are, I think, eight warbands, uh, Chaos warbands that have been, um, they're all coming from these different tribes, uh, they, mm -hmm. they all have um, a different approach to life. Uh, but they've all heard the call of Archeon, the Everchosen, mm -hmm. and they want to come and join his horde and rampage across the mortal realms. Uh, and they're all basically fighting. Uh, they've all come to this point, place, the, um, I think it's the eight points, is the, the area that they come to. They're all fighting, they're trying to um, show Archeon that they're worthy of being in his horde. Um, so it's pretty cool. But yeah, you get some really super wild ones. Uh, we're, we're working on uh, Splintered Fang. Yes, the snake people. The snake people. The sneakle. Yeah, the sneakle. The sneeple. The sneeple? Is that how it? I, I don't, mm. Hmm. Better than hmm. peep cake. <laughs> peep cake. <laughs> Sneeple. Let's go with Sneeple. <laughs> so the snake people. So we've got a couple on the. I uh, want you the to name <laughs> everything from I, now I, on. I will, not do I that will ever. create <laughs> miniatures just for you to name them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, so yeah, we're painting uh, some models today from the uh, Splintered Fang, who are. Uh, have very, very much a sort of gladi gladiatorial kind of look. They're uh, like gladiator Slytherins. They are, yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're big fans of snakes. They're big span fans of poison. So all of their weapons are poisoned. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're all about that kind of thing. I love this one. Yeah. Just they're, like they're, leaping. They're all, they're all super cool. Um, I'm a big fan of the, uh, who's it, the serpent caller. It has um, all the snakes sort of twisted around. Um, around the body. I'm sad Johnny wasn't able to. There's literally a token that's just snakes. Snakes. Just snakes. I'll pop it into the pile of snakes. The close cam here. <laughs> so we can have a look at it. But uh, maybe not. <laughs> there's there's a button. Just one of them. Press them all. Just shh, across with the. Maybe it'll get to the right button yeah. in a second. There we Th go. There we go. So yeah. Just snakes. Just snakes. I love it so much. And that's my favorite one. That one's really cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're yeah. they're really intricate. I like I yeah. love how all of them are intricate and then snakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty uh, pretty awesome. They're fun. Uh, one thing we are doing today is we are giving away a box of actually my my favorite oh. models. Uh, the unmade. Oh, with that fun guy who we actually have him yep. primed right here. Yep, I, I put him together this morning just in case. Just in case we just needed in him. Case. Yeah, I'll pop him up there. Pop him on the He's spinner. A, he, uh, oh, an unprimed version, because uh, oh, this is up yours, on the, up correct? On the spinner, yep. Yep. So these are examples of Dave's. Uh, Primed but not painted versions. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So all of the, the unmade, one of the things they do, as a, one of the rituals they go through, mm -hmm. is they um, remove their, their, the skin of their face. They flay, they flay their That's face. Very Halloween of them. And they, they wear it as a belt buckle. That's 
just wanted to talk about how okay. high, high crazy fantasy this was. <laughs> um, but you know what? I'm I I definitely uh, I'm going to stick with my Sneeple. Yep, for sure. I'm so gonna... see, see on the belt buckle there. There's a face. That's there's a skin face. That's the the face of oh, this one. So the bliss. This is the blissful one. Is the that's... tallest model there, and then the awakened ones. That the doesn't seem very blissful to me. That. Though I do like his, I do like what he built for his legs. I yeah, yeah. Kind of the, the blades. That's fun. Yep. Um, hey, to, uh, everyone! Oh. In, yeah, we have a lot of chat people. Excellent. Hey, everybody in the chat. Oh. Hey, everyone. Hey, Rick. Hey, Byron. Oh. Hey, Michael. Hi, Cat. Hi, Franklin. Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. How does one call a serpent? <laughs> Hey, you. <laughs> uh, I used to have a pet snake. I would just, I would just call him like he was a cat or something. I would just. <laughs> Give a little scratching of your fingers. He was. He was the best pet I ever had because he was quiet. He was clean. And if I wanted to hang out with him while I did my homework, I'd just put him around my neck. And snakes, whenever they get warm, yep. they contract their muscles. Oh, okay. So you get a free neck massage. Nice. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah, fun fact. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, so I mentioned we're going to give away the unmade. Yes. Uh, this this completely sealed box uh, of the unmade um, today. So what's the hashtag for the this? The hashtag for today is hashtag the unmade. The unmade. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> Does what, what it says on the hashtag. <laughs> so we'll be giving those away. And they are super cool. I'm going to get Leona to switch to the uh, close cam. So we yeah, we're making Leona work today with all the camera angles. Working hard. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll come back and talk about what's on the spinner. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make go back and forth. Okay, so here are some of the uh, the models. There's the blissful one. Yeah, they're just cool. The ascended ones. I mean, creepy, but cool. Yeah, definitely creepy. This one is the uh, the joyous one. They have such happy names for such... Terrifying concepts. They do, <laughs> and they're the awakened ones. And check, check this surprise out at the end. They make me want Buffy. <laughs> like I just. Feel How cool is that for creepy Halloween? Like <laughs> snake, the snake people. I'm like, I feel, I feel fine. I feel safe. All right. Um, <laughs> but, but not so much with the people who cut their own faces off. But with the people who cut their own faces off, I'm like, I have a hankering for Buffy or Scooby Doo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is worrisome because in Scooby Doo they unmask people, so I just like. Oh yeah. You unmask them and rut row. Um, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> totally rut row. <laughs> <laughs> it's just their face. It's all about the rut row. Um. Excellent. Kat, would you like to sit down and have a combo with the guy who thought up skinning them and making about buckles? I would. <laughs> I would totally. I would totally have that interview. Hi. Let's sit down and talk about how we can make even weirder, more <laughs> strange and terrifying things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, one thing on, on that note, I will um, recommend that if you're interested in doing that and listening to some of the folks that talk uh, to talk about these things, uh, Games Workshop have a. Have, they have two podcasts. Uh, one is called Voxcast, which covers all oh, their. Um, I've heard that one. Yep, yep, covers all their 40k stuff. They, that runs every two weeks, and then in the two week, the, the period in between those two weeks, is Stormcast, which oh. is the the podcast about uh, Warhammer: Age of Sigma. So when Warcry was released, they spoke to um, Maxime Pastorel. Mm -hmm. Who is Maxime Pastorel? Uh, about the process of creating each of those, um, each of the war bands and I want different bits and pieces. Lance Connect, did I pronounce that right? Maybe, we don't know, <laughs> it's German. Um, but that's the um, fighting style that I learned okay. and they were mercenaries in yep. the uh, 14, 1500s, uh, 1400s, uh, yep. uh, don't quote yeah, me 1400s. on that. Anyways, they were fashion disasters, purposefully, and I think those would be the best minis. I can't believe you said that. That were fantastic. They were so great. I know. I say that as a compliment. Oh, okay, right. Okay. <laughs> I say that in the most lovely way. So delightfully um, colorful. I did. I did reenactment with a, a group of them. So uh, what I don't know and can't say confidently within the next year, I will most definitely <laughs> know <laughs> and Excellent. say with confidence. Uh, but. 
Um, yeah, they had the best fashion. And I would, I like, oh man, that would be the best. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Be just a bunch of disaster mercenaries rolling up <laughs> with brightly colored everything. Um, that would definitely be cool. But knowing the, uh, like the Warhammer, what well, they call the Warhammer, the world that was, or Warhammer Fantasy Battle, mm -hmm. the, uh, there was an army called the Empire, or a faction called the Empire, and they were based uh, sort of loosely on um, sort of 14th, 15th, well, yeah, 15th, 16th century um, German Ooh. forces. So they had a lot of that um, that Landschneck kind of look, the puff and See, slash. Say that word five times, and eventually your mouth will glue itself together. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than eating peanut butter. How do you spell butter. it? Uh, I'm not gonna attempt. I will. I should know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> L A N D S C H N E K D T. Oh, yeah, K. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I should. K T? Mm -hmm. Okay. My group will make fun of me for not pronouncing anything right, but I'm okay <laughs> with that. Uh, I don't, it's fine. Yeah. All good. I can't roll my R's uh, when I speak Spanish either. It's really, people should just be happy I can mm. say English words at all <laughs> at any point in time. We are. We're <laughs> delightfully happy. I appreciate that. Excellent. But uh, yeah, so the, the Warhammer world used to be, uh, had a lot of influences from. Um, Sort of uh, had a lot of almost direct, really uh, historical analogs. So, the Empire were the sort of Germanic uh, folks. The um, Bretonians were uh, sort of early medieval French. That's fine. Um, there were Estallians who were a little bit more uh, Spanish. Tolians were Italian. But uh, yeah, when they blew it all up and started over again with uh, Age of Sigma, it definitely went for a very um, high fantasy kind of approach. And I think for folks who enjoy their uh, Conan, <laughs> these Splendid Fang guys would be perfect. I like uh, I like fantasy uh, costuming, I guess I should say, because I mean it's still costuming for miniatures. Sure. Um, that does has shout outs to certain things. So if right. you're a, if you're a history buff or if you uh, have a certain like aesthetic that you really enjoy, you can pick it out and get excited about it. But then elevate it and warp it into that fantasy aspect to yeah. into something new. Like that's that's my favorite, um, is seeing the creativity, but still being able to, what what what? Oh hey, yes. Yep. <laughs> I think basically the the Swiss guards who uh, who guard the Vatican Vatican <laughs> yeah. are, um, are, they are. Uh, yeah they're that organization it has been around since the. Yes, the 1400s, it, it, 1500s. it has been. Uh, whenever I was doing the reenactment, uh, they were focusing specifically on having just just been in Italy, I believe. Uh, okay. So towards the end of that whole mercenary campaign, kind of ro okay. roving army uh, thing. Right. Um, but it was fun. It was Excellent. it was a good time, crazy days, bright <laughs> colors. It, I just love the fact that you think historical things and no one ever thinks bright colors, and then you yep. just have or at least as garish as they. Oh man, it was were. So, the more garish the better. <laughs> uh, and I like that translating over into miniatures because uh, I I just think that it's fun. <laughs> Yeah. I have a weakness for characters that are fashion disasters <laughs> and shouldn't exist. <laughs> Quick, blend in. No chance of that happening. Not happening. 
That is the maybe, most fun. Maybe they could hide up against tapestries. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna try that now. <laughs> you're you're giving me too many ideas. The next person who plays a, a round of D and D with me is gonna be like, no. Right. It's probably gonna be Rick. Probably. There we go. Let's check Heck. the chat. Mike says, hey. Hey, Mike. Um, <laughs> bad spellers unite. <laughs> uh, I'm a horrible speller. I, I spell everything horribly because I still sound it out with a heavy Louisiana <laughs> accent in my head. <laughs> right. So that's just my curse. <laughs> People mess with me. Uh, oh, tiefling, not tiefling. Tiefling, ooh. Tiefling would actually be a really fun pun, and... I thought it was Tiefling. It's it not? is Tiefling, but they're spelling oh. it like five different ways. Oh, okay, right now. Yeah. yeah, and one of them was spelled like tea, like you said. Okay. Like, I just oh, like that was a, cute. A, a drink with tea. Like, add an adorable image of like a fancy little tea shop Tiefling. Okay. In all its scary, scaly glory. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Jared says, hello all. I love the bright colors on almost any models I paint. No fashion disasters ever. <laughs> just oh. makes it more fun. Yep. Oh, I just realized. Oh, yeah. Gretchen, can yes. I get you to just lean across here? I thought about that. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> totally reached that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. It's like almost a swan. It's <laughs> Thanks. fine. Thanks, Leona. You, you know what? Today was, it, it's a committal. Like, like one day we're going to show up and there's just going to be like three paints and one paintbrush. And you're going to, Leona's just going to cackle and be like, fight for it. <laughs> what happens, happens. We could share. We could. I'd finger paint a set of minis. I'd do that. I think if you did the, uh, if we did it in the, almost well, like a Chinese whispers kind of approach, where like I could start and paint the first 15 minutes and then hand it over to you, you paint the next 15 minutes, paint it back, I would, and hand it back. I feel like we could have a, a miniature outcome that wouldn't be horrible. No. I, I also feel fun. like I would be like, and I would sneak a glitter paint in there just to, to mess with me. Just to mess with you. Oh, it's my 15 minutes. <laughs> Let's see what he does with this. Metallics! Make it work, Dave. Make it work. Yes. Uh, maybe that's not such a good idea for us to do. I think it would be fun. It could be. It could be. But, uh, yeah, speaking of painting things for challenges. Ah, yeah. I saw you've uh, already done some. You saw my pumpkins. You've done some work. I saw Johnny's pumpkins as well. And he added those to the post? Uh, yeah, so for those of you who have been paying attention in our Facebook page, and for everyone else, join the Facebook page and pay attention to it. <laughs> uh, we are doing a painting happy little pumpkins. So uh, last weekend I painted some pumpkins as an example. You can paint uh, whatever you'd like on your pumpkins, um, but it's more fun if it's mini related. <laughs> yep. uh, or gaming related, I guess I should say. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, you can enter a giveaway. So go onto the Facebook page, join if you haven't, look at all of the rules. Uh, there's a nice little post that explains everything. It's super simple, it's nothing crazy. And then I did two examples. So one of them is an, a kind of like fancier example with a big old dragon, and the other one is a simple little example with a bunch of eyeballs. Um, that was really cool. That's my favorite I, one. Everyone likes I mean, the, 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 the dragon. The dragon I spent like three, four hours on, and everyone's like, I like your eyeball <laughs> monster that took five minutes <laughs> and two drops of paint. Well, just so you know, I, I like both of them. <laughs> my preference is for the eyeball. <laughs> the eyeball monster. It turned out really for good. Sure. It, was, it was a very cute concept. I liked the, whenever I saw the crazy little gourd, um, I was like, that's fun because the eyeballs just blend in there. Right. And it reminded me of something that you'd actually find in a D&D &D campaign. Right. Like you yep. would be just picking pumpkins and then one of them would blink at you. Um, yep. So. No, that's cool. I think it's a, um, definitely a, 
a cool, fun idea. I'm looking forward Get to seeing what people do. Get into the holiday spirit. Yep. I, think I might try and, uh, try and paint one up this weekend. Do it. It's the last weekend before Halloween. Yep. Oh, I know. <laughs> so much going on. Dave it? still hasn't got his costume, so I get to pick it. Just know that everyone <laughs> in the chat. I said anything but Slave Leia. <laughs> so let's let's keep it within those parameters. There's a lot I can still do with that. Oh sure. <laughs> yeah. Anything but Slave Leia means nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. It should be good. Uh, but yes. <laughs> What's going on in the chat? Uh, Michael says, one paintbrush, two painters. That could make a sick video. Yeah. <laughs> um, Craig says, use Apple Barrel just to mess with Dave. <laughs> Get a little twitchy. <sighs> but in the, uh, in the spirit of her friend... James Wapple, <laughs> I would have to paint. Cat says that. anything? Well, I no, also... You, you spoke your words. Well, I also... Now lie in them. <laughs> I will. No, well, next, next Thursday I will. <laughs> I'll lie around in them. Uh, but, but I'm also aware of like, the, what we're talking about budget-wise as well. So I know, um, that, I know that anything doesn't mean actually anything could show up. <laughs> One, you underestimate... My mm. conniving, mischievous shenanigan abilities. This, is, this is quite possible. I might, I might be, I might be underestimating them. And two, I am a crafter. Yep. I will go into Michael's with twenty dollars. Yep. And I will come out with a costume. I look forward to it. <laughs> I look forward to it. It should be fun. It'll be good fun. So yes, and also if anybody else is um, going to be painting along with us next Thursday in costume, send us photos. Oh my gosh, yes. How cool would that be? How cool would that be? It would be fun. And uh, actually next week will be my uh, two year anniversary. Even? On the show. Better. I know. How crazy is that? When I started, it was like, oh, this is going to last a couple of months. <laughs> but now, two years later. Man, I've been doing it for amazing. a year. You've been doing it for two years. Yep. That's crazy. It is. Absolutely insane. But definitely cool. Whole two years of and having to explain what you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the weirdest thing. People are like, what do you do for work? And I'm like, I do... Many things. I paint little toy soldiers. <laughs> uh, I try to avoid meeting people who aren't already painting toy soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, Runestorm. Hey, the old wolf. Uh, oh, Kat cool. says, reminder, I work in fabric and have a huge workroom of stuff. Are you saying that you're going to create something for me, Kat, and send it over? Oh you better be quick. Cat, I'm just saying you have full permission to slip into my DMs for shenanigan purposes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sarah says I think Dave should be Lando. Um, no blackface, obviously. But no, obviously suit not. and cape should be easy. Uh, we were actually just talking about Star Wars costumes earlier. Yeah. Because my youngest brother said that I had to man up and be Han Solo back in the day. Yep. Um, and then Richard says, Dr. Frankenfurter. That's a fun one. Do you know that reference? Uh, I, I kind of do. Is that from... Um Hmm, hang on, who? Dr. Frankenfurter? Yeah. Oh, Frankenfurter, sure. Yeah, yeah. Frankenfurter <laughs> is a Rocky Horror Picture Show, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It what was the doctor, it was do doctor that threw me at was that. What hmm? size heels do you wear? Uh, it would be it? probably uh, a men's nine, and, men's nine, nine and a half, thereabouts. <laughs> I'm not sure what that translates to in, in actual heels. Uh, Craig says, I'd paint some more, but I had teeth removed yesterday and I'm on painkillers, so I don't want to mess up. 
I think that that is the... Oh boy. The perfect time to yes, be painting? Yes, that is the perfect time. Get a miniature that you aren't like supremely attached to and then just go hog wild while doped up on painkillers. Right. Um, last time I and was And then doped. have a chuckle about it afterwards? Yes. Last time yep. I was doped up on painkillers, I went online and harassed people about kittens. As you do. And then the next morning, I realized I didn't know any of those people. <laughs> that I was just like <laughs> sliding into people's DMs talking about kittens and how cute they were. Right. Um, and then I met like one of those people at a convention because they were an artist that I admired. Right. And I like went up and then I realized that like I was the weird kitten person. <laughs> and and they told stories about you to their friends. Uh, oh my God! Last night I didn't introduce it was this weird myself as the weird kitten person. I just try hoped that I mean. They didn't know who I was online. Right. <laughs> I was just, just casually bought stuff. I think it would have been fantastic. Hi, remember that like weird ask you got on Tumblr about kittens? That was me. That was me on Vicodin. <laughs> just to let you know, I'll be having some more tomorrow. <laughs> be prepared. That's not the worst thing to harass people about online. Kittens? Oh, yeah. no, it's true. That's, it's, I mean, I, I, I wasn't it's probably, saying... It's probably one of the more benign things. I was just... Because my, my, uh, my mother's cats had had kittens recently. Oh, okay. And so I was just topped up on pain meds with a broken hand. Like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, <laughs> these kittens are amazing. I need to tell the <laughs> world. I need to tell everyone <laughs> how awesome. adorable these kittens are. And I did because it was a good idea. Yes. And I just think that yes. that translates over <laughs> into painting extraordinary minis. Right. Um, it, it, it may well. <laughs> I, I, sh I should be Catwoman. I thought about Catwoman. Gretchen should be Catwoman, for sure. Only if I could bring my cat into the studio. Sure. Well, I like how you I... just make that executive decision, <laughs> just, yes. It's not my studio. <laughs> You might want to check with HR, but... I don't think anyone's deathly allergic to cats. Yeah, I don't know. We can find out. <laughs> uh, it's the old wolf. Some of my best work has been done while on painkillers. Exactly, because your inhibitions are gone. Yep. And things seem like good ideas. You never know. It seemed um, like a good idea at the time. Kat says, a couple of years ago, my daughter and her sweetie were Han and Leia, but reversed, his long hair and buns, but his beard was an odd touch. Uh, my boyfriend and I, our first Halloween as a couple, we went as Buttercup and Wesley from Princess Bride. It was super cute. Um, yeah, and he had, uh, he actually had like the sword skills, so we, we brought a sword to the Halloween party. <laughs> it was great. That does not sound dangerous at all. N not one not bit. All. Well, the best yeah. part is, is that that would have been funny if it uh, had been like other swords people. Like they totally oh, would right, have been okay. like, yeah. It was just some of my friends that aren't swords people <laughs> <Right>. at all. <laughs> They're like, what hey, have you, what, the... what, what have you brought here, Gretchen? And I was like, new on? boyfriend, <laughs> <laughs> swords. <laughs> Check it out. That's cool. Okay the best way to introduce someone to your friends group? Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um. <laughs> Greg, no, she needs to be Fim Shepherd. <laughs> hmm? That'd be funny. Ooh. What do we got? Okay. Does it take you a minute to get that reference? Or oh, no, I still haven't got it. it. Scooby -Doo? It's a video game. I'm pretty sure it's a video game. Fem Shepherd from ME3. Yeah. No? Sorry. No? Okay. Wow. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> 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 yes. See, I understood that reference only through os osmosis between my friends who actually play Mass Effect. 
Sorry, it was a video game reference. We are tabletop gamers. I under I understand. Yeah. I... Thank you for again promoting my <laughs> ignorance. Look, here's another thing doesn't Dave doesn't know about. I don't like being ignorant, but I also don't like the amount of effort that goes into not being ignorant. <laughs> but yeah. No, all good. This is a I'm comfortable with my gain knowledge through osmosis. Yeah. That's how I have all of my uh, comic book knowledge, actually. That's fair. I used to work in an office with um, probably about like a dozen serious comic book nerds, and I learned a lot of stuff. I learned so much working here about comic books that I otherwise probably wouldn't know because right. I'm I'm a fan of comic books, and I but I'm like it's the same way I'm a fan of Star Wars, right? Like. Okay. I am not a mega Star Wars fan. I am not. It's not like me with Jurassic Park or me with Lord of the Rings. I'm right, just, okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate the story. I appreciate the theatrics. I. It's just something that I like on a normal fan level. Sure. <laughs> um, which I feel like is is funny to say because everyone has to. I feel like either you absolutely love Star Wars or you're like shoved in the corner and it's like no, not allowed to talk about Star Wars. Nobody stuff. puts Gretchen in the corner. <laughs> Nobody. No one. Nobody. Um, but no, I, I sincerely enjoy it as a franchise, and I'm the same way with comics, uh, certain comic book series, uh, where I'm just like, oh, I enjoy this. Um, but then I started working here, and like, man, I'm like, I, I thought I was like baseline nerd level. Right. But, oh, <laughs> I learned. And it's fun, though, because I get to learn things that I didn't necessarily, like, wouldn't have been put in the position to learn previously. Right. Yep. Um, which is always super fun. I discovered that I'd, I'd learned a lot um, when we started watching the, like, going to the the movies to see the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, yeah. And uh, there'd be things like, oh, no, we have to wait until the end and watch this, and this, this is... This happened. That means that this is a reference to that. And Julia would be like, "Did did you read that comic? No, nope. <laughs> nope. I and I also have no idea. I don't rec recall the conversation that was going on where I learnt that information. <laughs> just I had the information. I like I absolutely it adore was how the Marvel Cinematic Universe though has made that push because right. so many people now." Um, all, all like the super fan nerds are like, I get that reference, and there's this reference, and there's this little peek at this, or what about this? And then all of the people that maybe didn't hadn't gotten the chance to get to that level or get into it, or that's okay, you can call us casuals. Their, <laughs> that's fine. Or we're just starting their journey, <laughs> their nerdy journey. Um, like they get the opportunity to get more involved and get more into it. Right. And yeah. I love that. I am like. I am a big fan of it doesn't matter the level of your fandom. Like, you're still Yep, you're fandom. still a fan. Enjoy sure. the things. Yep. Um, no, definitely down for that. <laughs> Yay, let's Ooh. look at some minis. Okay. Um, yes, let's. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the Go chat will still be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, this was uh, definitely cool. So, um, I think it's, this is an Instagram thing that's kind of... Is this uh, the Meet the Artist thing? Uh, yeah, art, art versus artist. Yes, I've heard of this. Yep, so, uh, so that's Josh in the middle. He looks exactly like that, actually. He's incredibly <laughs> two-dimensional in his appearance. The, does he always carry the cat, though? Uh, like, yes. At all times? Yes, it makes it very difficult for him to paint, but obviously uh, he does beautiful work. Well, the cat has the paint. Is, is the cat actually the one painting that's on the thing? Yeah, Josh does that I'm, I'm going to put that out there, that I think <laughs> that it is a sham, <laughs> and... The big fat cat has been actually painting everything. That's fair. It's just a front yep. that there's a human. That's true. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but just to go back to, to uh, Josh for a second. Uh, one thing I was going to mention is uh, Josh is doing uh, a painting stream. Now, he's always done, he's done his own painting stream. Uh, mm -hmm. But now on Mondays, he's going to be doing a painting stream with Reaper. Okay. Uh, so Miniature Mondays, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you head to the uh, Reaper Miniatures Facebook page, you'll find out more about that, or check out their website, or head to the Mini Painting Studio Facebook page. Um, but yeah, super cool. 
Very nice. Good work, Josh. Good work, Josh's cat. Yes. <laughs> okay, and Craig. Craig stuns. Um, did Craig put up all these minis? Yep. In in this format? Yep. Was okay. that like a whole day? I don't did, know. Did, Craig, did you just like devote a day to just painting as many like minis as pot? Are you saying that because they're all in the yeah, same background? Yeah, because they're all in the, the same, same background. Yeah, like that's what it looks like. It looks like you just, like Craig just went full ham. Oh, like, yeah, you went. Today we mini. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. I don't know. They all look great. Like, they do. I like the guy at the top with the, uh, the hammer. Actually, the big, not to bring it over. Yeah. I don't know, the, yeah. the middle one, the centaur. Like. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I like the, uh, the, the blue and orange that's working on uh -huh. that one as well. It's definitely good. But no. Cool. Nice work, Craig. Oh, hey. That's... Who's that? That, that looks familiar. Ah, that's weird. Never heard of her. Strange. Neither have I. Gretchen Settle. Never tremors. heard of him. That's not a tremor. That's not a tremor. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is a crazy, crazy thing. One thing I forgot, um, just a, just one of the, yeah. the odd facts that I know about um, Dune. Mm -hmm. So the, this is the David Lynch version um, it was filmed you in, gotta like, clarify because they're coming out with a new one I so. know there's so, yeah. so many too many because <laughs> um, this was for me this is the, the quintessential mm -hmm. one but uh, yeah so the there's a, a scene where they uh, where he climbs onto the worm uh -huh. for the first time so he has to run forward with the um, uh, the hook yeah I'm just trying to think of the name it's like the Chris Maker hook or something uh -huh. like that um, to put in and, and fly it apart so that piece of the worm that he's running alongside was made of thousands and thousands and thousands of condoms. What? Yeah. The rubber that that's made out of, it's all from condoms. <laughs> Just, there you go. Now you, now <laughs> you guys know too. Of today. And I don't have to mention that ever again. <laughs> Except any time <laughs> that Dune comes up. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yes, yeah. very nice work there from Gretchen. Beautiful. Thank you. Good job. Oh, Michael Ball, Ooh. Esmeralda. From the D. &D. The D and D. Sorry, <laughs> from the D and D, the, as opposed to a no D and D. There's no other. No, no, no. The well, D and well, D. Actually, when I said a D and D, it's like an advanced Dungeons and Dragons. But <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nice work, Michael. Uh, looking cool, and I think um, the uh, the extra work on the base as well. It definitely, definitely looks uh, nice. Definitely brings it all together. Handsome. Yeah, looking cool. Excellent, Dwight Crow. Slash. That's like an entire army. Slash in Yep. Everyone temple. Oh my goodness. That's impressive. Yeah. With the background in the distance too, it just looks like they're just swarming up in, on like the sunrise or something. Yeah. Yep. Does look like that. So, uh, so Slanesh is one of the um, one of the four Chaos Gods. Uh -huh. So, the Warcry warbands. I said that there are eight. Uh, there are eight. Pardon me. Basically, Chaos-based warbands. Uh, none of them actually are devoted to a particular god. Mm -hmm. um, probably because they don't know about the gods yet. But once they've spent a bit of time in the eight points and they're, they're working towards ascending, they'll um, they'll learn about. Slanesh, uh, who's the god of excess, and I'm thinking the splintered fang would probably be Slaneshi, uh, Slaneshi fighters. But yeah, but no, great work, Dwight. I think um, yeah, done some beautiful, beautiful work there. Joel Coronado. Oh, the muscles. Check out that beast. Beast. Yeah. Um, the shading on the muscles is done really nicely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the. And with a with a big mini like that, where you've got all that, that musculature, mm -hmm. being able, like going in and, and spending your time to get all of that looking great is uh, is key to a brilliant mini. But yeah, nice work, Joel. I, th I also love the, um, the little. Uh, no, that's cool. I said great work before I finished my <laughs> assessment. But I also love the uh, little um, edges on the the um, metals, so on that shoulder pad mm -hmm. on the. The spikes on the shoulder pad and on the that manacle on the wrist, but yeah, nice work. Done. <laughs> Clive Mills. That is the sad, 
troll. Look at his Aww. face. Aww. His face. He looks confused. I wouldn't want to fight him. I feel like he's just woken up. Right. Okay. He's. Somebody's been cl nice clip clopping over his bridge. Yes. Like yep. he's just. Who, who's that? Who, who's like, that? Like, cause you can see like the way he's painted him with his, like his eyes aren't obstructed or anything. Like he's just. Right. His expression's just good. Yeah. Yep. This is the one that uh, that Clive uh, that we we talked about when we talked about pinning mm -hmm. and metal models. So this is the the one. Ah, okay. But yeah, coming along, uh, looking good, Clive. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> fantastic. Speaking of. I love this yep. homebrew variant for horrified. Ah. Excellent. So we're not painting. We're not painting these ones. We're no. not painting no, okay, the right. Scooby Gang. Oh. We're gonna paint iconic monsters. Okay, cool. That's what we're doing next week. Yes. Iconic monsters, fantastic. But so it'd, be, iconic, it'd be cool if we did these that's two. That's a hint, hint, wink, wink to my actual <laughs> Halloween costume. Iconic. Iconic. There mm. we go. But no, looking great, Art. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Look great. Josh has been painting Ooh, up. Ooh, that's detailed. Man. Oh, is it? Yep. That great uh, red cloak flowing off the back. Oh, yeah, the pattern though too. Yeah. Very the, steady uh, hand to get those lines. Yeah, that's um, that's amazing. I wonder. I'm wondering. I just did you uh, paint it gold first, and then uh, paint the blue over that? Would you paint it blue and then paint the gold? Very curious. But uh, no, looking good. Very nice. He's just my miniatures. First real time doing lava, as opposed to the fake times. The fake times. Previously. Some people call those practice. <laughs> practice. <laughs> those Wait, are the fake times. They're the fake times? Yeah. The fake times? That's where you take things that you don't, you don't care about and you paint on them. You like just paint everything lava. <laughs> everything, everything becomes lava. <laughs> but no, this is looking good. It I think looks the, really uh, good. Yeah. Having the, um, those little, little sort of pieces where the... Uh, the brighter lava, the the, the mm -hmm. hotter lava, the yellow is sort of breaking through, and then where it's cooling on top. With the it it truly looks like it's glowing. Thread. Yep. And uh, I think also great choice of black for all the, yeah. the stonework around it, because it really it makes it pop. Makes it makes it, pop. it look that much more uh, hot. hot. That's hot. a good hot. Uh -huh. Yep. Because yeah. if that had been sandstone, Ooh, very, yeah, di very different have... feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, good choice. Work. Oh, and is painting some Ooh. infinity. Oh, these are looking good. Yeah. Man, the uh, infinity models are so so detailed and so crisp. But I like. Um, there are times when when I like just like to sit down and paint directly from the box. Mm -hmm. Like paint, use the same color schemes and and try and echo yeah. what they've done on there. Uh, when I painted a lot of dark age miniatures. miniatures a couple of years ago, I, I did exactly that because the paint jobs on the box were spectacular. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, working from that is a great way to, uh, to practice your skills and push yourself a little bit further. Hmm. But yeah, looking good. Very nice work. Mike Chapman. <laughs> yep. Volcanic, Volcanic Venom Crawler. So, I don't know, is, is Volcano going to be the theme for the day? Might be. Was I'm that sorry. secretly our? Was it not dizzy? Was it volcano? Was it, was it, it, well, I'm just wondering if it's one of the. It might be one of the Inclover prompts. But uh, uh, that would also work for ornate too. It does. Because that is in an ornate uh, volcanic venom <laughs> crawler. It is. It is. But yeah, you can see the the work on the on the the back on the the abdomen piece of that venom crawler mm -hmm. um, with the the yellows and the oranges in there, and then with the black. Um, Little pieces of it's still too much lava. spider for me. Would not want to fight. No, no. Th nothing that moves Two out of ten like a spider. Would not fight again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, just a spider creep. Yeah, it is. It creeps me out. Okay, yeah. radio. So when I come in in a spider costume next week, then I will have bug spray like ready. Okay, radio. <laughs> and by bug spray, you mean primer. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, yeah. those are fun colors. Yes. Um, so this uh, is from Wrath of Kings, uh, as it says on the screen there. Um, this like is uh, from the Gorizzi faction. I like it. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, vampire. I like how, like, glowy and ethereal and just 
definitely get the Halloween spooky vibes. Yeah, yeah. Mark's done uh, brilliant work there on the on the greens. They look awesome. Paint cover, no base. Pardon? No base. No base. Carefully. Yep. <laughs> well, see, see, how the, see the feet down there? See how they're they're black? Yeah. I'd say that that by might that might be done, the primer. So. Yeah, so by the time you're done with the rest of the, the miniature, the top part should be dry enough to flip her around and paint her feet. Yeah, yeah. There are times when I um, I paint models not on the base that they're going to end up on, mm -hmm. but they'll be on a um, like a temporary base, like these um, unmade here. I just on a, I'll probably end up breaking those off and putting them on a, on a different resin base or something. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, looking good, Mark. Very nice. Oh, Chris. Speaking of Star Wars. Yeah. The uh, the funny thing here is whenever I see Bark, <laughs> I think um, Bark's, Barks. Yeah. Which is where we got well, our, you know, you our gotta, cat from. <laughs> Bark's. Baltimore to, Animal Rescue Center. Sometimes you need to go and you need to adopt your very own stormtrooper. And your very, they very are own speeder bike. In need of good homes. Yeah. But this is uh, this is cool. This is from the uh, the new. Uh, starter set for Star Wars Legion, mm -hmm. which it has the uh, is all the the Clone Wars. Yep. So it has these, and it has the uh, Trade Federation droids. Um, are up against it, I think. Pretty sure. But yeah, these Very look sharp. great, Chris. Very nice. Oh. Jeff Purcell, <laughs> and Reaper Bones Etten. Etten's always weird me out. Yeah. Always. It's delightful. Yeah. But no, it is, it is cool. I like that, um, so that, that kind of almost jaundiced mm -hmm. um, skin tone. And then with the, the hands that are on there, yeah. they're kind of drained of blood. So That's just that fair. white, yeah. well, that, that pale uh, color. I, li I like that basically the, the, two, the skin tones are different, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's definitely very cool. And the purple, uh, the purple hair. Oh yeah. On, on, the, on the the left head. I wonder if the right head is like, ah, God, dude, we are never going to get employed with, with you looking like that. <laughs> that would be the absolute worst. I would hate to be that attached to my sibling. Yeah. And that's it for now. Ha -ha. Okay, cool. Let's check out chat because apparently there's so many. Uh, Sarah says, I think Gretchen should be Inara from Firefly. That's a good costume idea. It's not my costume, but it's a good costume idea. Hey, let me scroll. There we go. Um, Dave must live in eternal bliss then. Uh, <laughs> hmm? Exactly. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll need to come back to We'll need to circle back to that, okay? Let's uh, circle back. Craig says, new Star Wars movies are no good, and Edward Cullen as Batman just proves DC needs to stop with live action and stay animated. I actually think that the Star Wars movies aren't bad, and yep. I will, I'm really excited to see uh, what that actor has to be for Batman, because Edward Cullen, he hated that role, you have to remember. Right. That wasn't him at his full acting potential. He was Cedric Duggery beforehand, and... Well, Shh. Shh. Well, that was more the role. Um, but that is also true. Uh, but he's been in other things and acted really well. I think uh, I, I, Twilight was its own special thing. Um, yep. Yep, that's what that was. And if you watch any of the interviews from the actors and actresses that were in that franchise, they have much more fun say th things <laughs> to say about it than I ever could. Um... Cat hair makes great brushes. <laughs> oh, I wish my cat. I would love to do a happy painting, happy little minis with just my cat. Just just painting. using your cat. Um, Jason, I am struggling with the mini I'm currently painting, and people are turning out masterpieces left and right. <laughs> yep. One one thing I'll remind everybody of, um, and this is based on a uh, the thing that's on the um, mini painting studio cover photo, mm -hmm. Facebook page cover photo, is comparison is the thief of joy. It is. Be careful what you compare yourself to or what you compare your work to and, and focus on the joy that painting brings you. And uh, that's my Bob Ross moment for the day. 
Uh, and on that note, uh, that's one safe worm. One safe worm. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> um, Craig, <laughs> Craig says can't stand pewter minis. Uh, the they screw up the brushes. Um, Sarah said that skirt in the one mini looked like stained glass, and I think she's oh, yeah. correct. That, yep. That'd be that ward answer. It, it just leads to the overall, like, ethereal kind of look to it. Yep. Um, Definitely. Some tips on not having pewter minis ruin brushes. I'm, I'm confused by that one. Other people seem to, what is, what, talk the, more about the, the pewter brush problem, pewter brush. <laughs> that, that might be the problem. <laughs> uh, Possibly, the, but unlikely. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I'm confused about that one because once it's, everything's primed, hmm. it's really the, it's all the, it's all the same. Yeah. It should be the same surface that you're painting on. Um, yeah. Huh. So I'm, that's right, that's, hence my confusion. So please feel free to pop a note in the chat. We'll, or, we'll try to figure it out. Yep. Is what we will try to do. Um, it might be less a pewter, pewter thing, or it might be more a brush thing. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, suddenly, we'll suddenly YouTube is is kicking. Um, where do they pull the pictures of Wyatt? We pull the pictures from our Facebook page. So if you join Happy Little Minis, Painting Happy Little Minis on Facebook, you can post your pictures up. And if you post your pictures up, we will pull them and show them on the next show. Yep. Whichever show is following the ones that you post pictures up for. And Join us. <laughs> <laughs> we, have this uh, we, do, we do have a cutoff, and I think it's like 4 o'clock on Wednesday. Yeah. Is that right? 4 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Uh, so if you get any of up before then. And for Wyatt, I actually have his picture. Oh, we you do? We just haven't shown it yet. Ah, oh, okay. okay. So it's in there, Wyatt. Stay tuned. It'll be shown in... 20 minutes. <laughs> it will be shown in 20 minutes. <laughs> there we go. Um, the Old Wolf says, I have brushes from Japan that are actual cat hair. Oh, wow. That's interesting. And I can't figure out if I would like the feeling of that for brushes. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like it'd be very, like, absorbing. Yeah. I don't know. Weird. It's something that I would paint with for the sake of figuring that out. Um, oh, why it's already joined. Yeah, okay. Cool. There we go. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Ah, okay. So pulling out hairs on the sharp edges of the pewter minis. I, again, I mean, these... You can see how sharp these edges are, but yeah. there's no pulling out of the hairs. So I'm, try different brushes or? I don't know. Um, pop it, uh, head into the, the Facebook group and pop in a, um, in a thing and uh, make a post about it, I guess. And we can have a chat would be the way to go. I think there's a, a lot of questions I'd like to ask that would, uh, that might get us to, to a good spot. But yeah, once the miniature's primed, they're all, everything should pretty much be the same. Now people are having some good, I some good ideas in the chat too about that filing edges. Right. <laughs> That's true. Um, let's see. The old wolf says the paintbrushes with cat's hair aren't that bad. The paint flows nicely. Um, okay. And now, now Gretchen's thinking, hmm, maybe I should. I'm just gonna go home and grab my 19-year-old Siamese cat and. Dip I do her. not recommend that. That is not what she sounds like. Uh, <laughs> so, Leona, you've never heard my cat scream, have you? Okay, so I want you to imagine Fran from The Nanny, but she smokes a pack a day. <laughs> <laughs> I've posted up on like Instagram and stuff, I've posted her up. She's, uh, you can tell that she's 19. Yeah. 
she's a baby. Just doing her best. Mike G says, maybe dry brushing too vigorously? Yeah, if we're talking about dry brushing, as far as the, the losing hairs to the, to the miniatures, that can be a thing. Um, it might depend on the, the age of the brush or the quality of the brush. I know a lot of people say just like grab any brush from Michaels or Hobby Lobby or whatever. But or if you're like me and you just destroy. Destroy them. Destroy Deliberately. Them. <laughs> you, go, you go out of your way to destroy them. I don't go you're out of my on. way, but I will say that you probably don't want to know the kind of brush I used for that dragon pumpkin you're or right. its current state. You're right. Being. I don't. Don't want to know. <laughs> don't want to know. Because it definitely was not my cat. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's cool. Um, just thought for a second we could probably uh, talk a little bit more about Warcry. That's something we could do. We could uh, do. Because I brought in, Tell us more. brought in these guys from, from my warband that is now five games into a campaign. So, hooray! So there we go. These are um, these are some that we painted on the show in August, I think. Oh yeah. July. Oh, July or August. Yeah. Um, but these ones are from the uh, the Iron Golem warband, uh, and as you can tell, they're all about metal and hammers and smashing people. I am in love with the chainmail, both the sculpts and the painting, because it looks like it's actually going to move. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. It's got that. Um, it's not the riveted chainmail look, or is it? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure yet. But uh, yeah, it's definitely it's it's the one that isn't as connected, as yes. it isn't as interwoven as some of the other stuff. But uh, yeah, these guys are, are a lot of fun, and as I said, they're all about hitting people with their hammers. Uh, if you play them like that, if you play them like run out, get in your opponent's face, smash them, knock them off objectives, um, push them around, uh, they'll perform very well. Uh, the Ogor here is one of the, the beefiest guys <laughs> on the basic uh, on a basic roster, um, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so I mentioned them playing in a campaign. The campaign for the game is very cool. Um, a lot of wargaming campaigns that people play require everybody to play X number of games as they go through, or everybody to show up on the same night and all play at the same time, um, or in a very structured way. It might be like, okay, next week I'm going to play uh, Eric, and uh, Hans is going to play Mark, and okay. do something very specific. But Warcry is very open. Uh, in that everybody, their warband is on their own sort of campaign path. Yeah. So they have a particular series. They've got like 11 or 12 battles they've got to fight. And during that process, there are different events called convergences. Okay. And so there's a specific scenario that's laid out in the, in the book for you. And you have to play that scenario and you have to win that scenario to advance further along the campaign. Uh, and... Anybody can be your opponent during that convergence. Um, so it doesn't matter who shows up for game night. That's or, useful. Or it could be like, well, let me just, I'm just going to pop down to the store and play a quick half hour game against um, yeah. one of the guys who I know is going to be down there and get my convergence out of the way and I can keep moving on. Or it, if you get down there and lose and you're like, oh, okay, I've got to work out what I'm going to play next. But um, it's not. It doesn't depend on everybody else in the campaign yeah. playing at the same time as you. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely cool. It a, has a lot more flexibility, um, which is nice. And because the, uh, the things you get for winning, for advancing, or moving along that, that track of things, uh, the ad advancements or the enhancements you get mm -hmm. to your warband aren't super significant over the course of like three or four battles. So even if somebody's like two two battles behind the number that you've fought, your warband won't be so much more powerful that you'll crush them every time. 
kind of thing. So you can have people you can have so people really, joining in a, cu a couple of games late, kind of thing. It really caters to I feel like adult gamers in that yeah. aspect of not always being able to have a, a night where everyone can get together. Yep. Because that's like the biggest problem I hear. <laughs> Everyone really wants to game, but everyone can't find a sitter on the same night, or someone works, or someone has a job. Or... Yeah, yeah, it's very definitely uh, like that. But uh, one thing I'm, I'm going to take a couple of these off here and show you. Oh, actually, here we go. We'll go back to this guy. So this is the one of the things that, uh, that you can do in most of the boxes as well. Pardon me, is there'll typically be a model or two that you have some flexibility as to how they're equipped. Ooh. So this one here is a guy who can be done as a signifier, so the, with the battle standard there, or he can be made up as the prefector. So it's the same That's base cool. model, but in this case he has different, just two different arms. And to make him a bit more different on the uh, tabletop, I trimmed the spikes off his helmet and gave him a different crest from another model. Mm -hmm. um, so he just has a, a different profile on the table. Uh, sort of very obvious as to who's who. So we've got those. And because my warband is advancing quite a bit, um, so I, I went and I actually bought a, uh, a, se a second Iron Golem box mm -hmm. set. And so I have the Ogor Breacher there, who has just, his fists are inside those hammers. Um, and I started converting this guy um, I've still got putty work to do to make the hands, but rather than having those fist gloves, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to go for a, a, just a big hammer that he can I run like around that. and swing. Um, also, I carved out his faceplate at the front there, so I can go <laughs> back with some putty and, and sculpt a new faceplate, so it's, again, a different, different look on the table. But, uh, yeah. We're, my gaming group were playing this at the moment, and we're really enjoying it. And you can play. Uh, also, some of the guys who are in that group work at um, games and stuff, one of our local gaming stores, and they have a Thursday night campaign as well. So they're playing in that with a different warband. So each week they're probably playing like five or six games of, of Warcry. But yeah, it is neat. I'm going to rip those off. I now. just like how you can play without having to worry about days and times and. Yeah, life getting in the way. It's definitely, um, definitely a great, uh, great, great kind of format to be able to do that. Hey, Dave. Yep. Could you talk a little bit about the skin and the way that you did that? Oh, on those guys. On those models. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll hold those under the the close cam while I'm talking about them. <laughs> Wyatt has jumped from watching us on YouTube to watching us on Facebook. Ah. Um. Oh. Radio, here we go. Um, so yeah, the uh, what I did with these guys, actually, yeah, it looks a bit a yeah. bit more washed out in there. So maybe we should put it on the spinner. Yeah. But I'll turn them around so you can get more of the the flesh bits showing. The flesh bits? Fleshy bits, yep. Okay. So it's like they're having a little conference. Um, <laughs> you have to go team <laughs> before you go fight. Sure, you do. Okay. Yep. Uh, so for these ones, I, I primed them black, uh, and I did the all of the metallics first. So I did some um, dry brushed on some tinny tin and some uh, some gun metal and so on, and built it up. And then the pretty much the last thing I did was the, uh, the skin. And I went back and painted over it with the uh, base color, um, the Wraithbone from the uh, contrast range. Um, I'll put that in the, in the shot there. Ooh. So I went back and uh, painted over it because it's got uh, really good coverage. So all of the parts that I wanted to be skin, I went and hit with this. And then, um, once that was dry, I hit it with the uh, Magus Purple, uh, which you used a little bit of last week. Ah, yes. Um, the Magus Purple from the contrast range. Uh, yeah. Makes them look very bruised. Yeah, it gives that, um, there's, uh, they're pale, but they've got a lot of blood pumping around. There's a lot, they're into the action and the fighting. 
Uh, and then actually went back with, uh, with a very pale skin color and uh, did some highlighting on the edge. I might have mixed in like an ivory into the, the Mage's Purple. But uh, yeah, just f fairly simple, fairly straightforward. I wanted these guys to be, be quick and uh, get them on the table for, for gaming. But um, yeah, so that's how I did the, the skin on those guys. Thanks. No worries. Oh, sorry, uh, one last thing. I always do that to you, I'm sorry, Leona. Uh, the, all of the blood splatter that I've done on their uh, weapons and hands or wherever is uh, the Blood for the Blood God technical paint from uh, Games Workshop. And it's just one coat. It's really easy to use. So, whoop, there um, we go. So Sarah mentioned always feeling like she's second-guessing her colors. Okay. Uh, whenever she has to paint skin. Right. Um, I highly recommend just in general for painting skin across the board, whether it be minis or whether you actually be painting traditionally, uh, it's really easy to t pull from photographs and the uh, different lighting or skin colors you're trying to represent. And then um, putting them, if you have Photoshop available or something, if you don't, you can always do this through Pinterest they, and just type in like skin color groupings, um, paint palettes. Um, but it will pull from the shadows, from the highlights, from the midtones. And then you can just color match. Yep. Um, and that will start uh, kind of just putting in your brain uh, the common uh, mid-tones, highlights, shadows with different skin types. So if you want to do darker skin tones, kind of like what I'm doing today, then uh, you can be able to uh, do those, um, whether it's with cool undertones or warm undertones, or if you're trying to accomplish something uh, that looks a little bit more death and decay um, There's plenty oh. of zombie films that you can do the same thing from and just color pick. Um, and on Pinterest, too, there's tons of different skin tone tutorials, paint palettes, um, uh, pre-done um, models just showing you um, how they all function together. So if you're still learning and you don't have those colors down in your brain, super easy to pick them up, um, have them print them out or have them ready to go um, to get the look that you're going for. Yep, I think it's a fantastic idea. Very uh, cool. Yet yeah, never be afraid of looking at reference pictures. Yep. People, for some reason, hate looking. I th think people think it's cheating. It's not cheating. It's learning. Exactly. Uh, you're not tracing anything. You, that'd be <laughs> really impressive if you could just trace anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you, you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if, because um, we're talking about skin tones, I guess I could. Um, I wasn't sure if this was going to show up later in the... The section, oh, yeah, minis. but we can we can just skip over it then if we want to talk about it now, yeah. or we can talk about it after everything, in the next batch. Let's talk about it now. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, so what I'll do is uh, this guy here. I posted him up on the um, Penny Up Little Minis page. He is part of a um, a war band that I'm doing up for uh, like Inquisitor Twenty Eight Gaming that I hope to do some next year. Um, posted on the Inquisitorium, thing, so I thought I'd wear the shirt, represent. Um, we see what you're doing today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to put these models up with it. These are uh, other models that I've built for the Warband that may appear familiar. So these are models from the, um, the Unmade. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you can win a box of these today. Using the hashtag the unmade, uh, yeah. So using those, um, created a backstory for them. I've taken some of the the fantasy miniature, uh, fantasy weapons and equipment, mm -hmm. sort of from off them, and added some more of the the forty k um, sci fi approach. So they all have um, much like the guy in the middle. They all have masks. They've all got um, like like rebreathers going on, and then a hose that goes back to a tank. Um, which will be painted yellow on all of them. Um, but, yeah, I replaced a, a bunch of the weapons with some weapons from the, um, the Escher gangers from Necromunda. And uh, some of them, a couple of them, these crazy weapons here. They're so 
that's a, uh, a taser goad <laughs> from the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus range. But uh, yeah, so. Cat, I do want to meet the people that just come up with all of this. Yep. Like, do, do they just like sit around a table and just like. They do. What's the weirdest thing that we can come up with? Yep. Now make it fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these are um, these are just some cool models that I've really been enjoying uh, working on. Uh, the model in the middle is from Blackstone Fortress. Um, yes, Wyatt, just yeah. like that. You're now in the running to win stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, they worked on on this guy, added some pieces, chopped some other pieces off, switched them around, gave him a really cool skull helmet. Yeah. Kind of uh, cast in bronze. And uh, when I posted it up, everybody was really liking the, uh, the skin tone sort of thing. And this is one that I've never done a skin tone like this before. So I asked some of my friends what I was like, I want to do a, like a sickly, grimy, gray kind of feel. And they were like, well, start with a, like a mid-warm gray mm -hmm. and then mix uh, yellow into it. And I was like, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound like it makes sense to me. <laughs> so I tried it and I was like, hmm. This is actually making sense to me now. <laughs> Color theory. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was, it was super impressive to, to see the way that, that sort of came into being. But I also mixed in um, some, some like a, a tanned flash kind of color um, as well. And rather than this being like a, okay, it was this paint, then this layer, then this layer, then this layer. Mm -hmm. It was more like it was this layer, then it was a bit of this mixed into that layer. Then it was a bit more of it mixed in, and then it was a bit of this mixed in, and by the end there were sort of four paints, all in the mix. All together. All together. Um, so, but it worked out really well. Very happy with it. And now I have to replicate that across another four or five models. So that should be fun. That's the only difficult part once you get into mixing paints. Yeah is that you finally get a mix that you want, and if you don't have like a wet palette, you can kind of keep things yep. going. Go <laughs> With watercolors, it's easier, because it just dries up, so you just add water next time, right. and your oh, mix yeah, is yep, still yep. there. So if you just make a little bit more than what you need, you're not wasting anything. Uh, but with acrylics, it's just... A little bit more difficult, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was very, uh, very happy with how he turned out. And uh, I used some uh, red, a little bit of red wash, just painted carefully in around the edges of the, the metal pieces that had sort of jammed into his skin. Um, and then painted some, uh, some thin sort of veins of red to make, give it that sort of infected look. But it's yeah. super gross. It is. I was really happy clever. with it. <laughs> so. yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is I'm really excited about these Warcry models. And I've got some plans for things to do with the, uh, the Corvus Cabal. Model, uh, Warband. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to turn them into, take them from being crow based into being eagle based. Ooh, that so I have to cut fun. off some of the, trim down some of the beaks. I mean, I'm a Corvid Cover. fan, but if you want to. Yeah, sorry, I'll go and spoil it for you. That's but anyway. really what you want to do, <laughs> then, by all means. Um, yeah, Byron nice. says, I want some blue skinned orcs. Oh, yeah. That's fun. That'd be cool. Um, let's see. <laughs> Kat says, wow, the professional and serious side of Gretchen. Great advice. Fun fact, I did go to art school. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Now everyone's going to try the blue skin. It's going to be great. It's going to be just... Yep. It's going to be genies for days. I was thinking Smurfs, but anyway. Um, I was just thinking blue da ba dee da ba die, so okay. y'all are both on better paths than I am. <laughs> um, Sarah says, in other words, I need to get more paints. Always get more paints, but you can, I mean, you don't technically need a ton of paints yep. in order to get different, um, in order to get the color range that you might be thinking of. The only time I absolutely feel like I need um, a paint is with purples because I hate mixing purple. Yeah. It is so difficult to get a vibrant 
uh, purple. Uh, but other than that, as long as you have um, a few different primaries and maybe like a cyan and a magenta <laughs> um, kind of color, you can pretty much mix anything. Um, you don't have to break the bank buying a bunch of paints. No. Um, but since we're on air, and we should be definitely advocating for buying all paints. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it, it's one of those things, like sometimes people want to want to know um, exact paint recipes, so they might have to get a particular exact paint. Yeah. But um, understanding what, what colors go into it, mm -hmm. or what type of colors, so they're talking about warm grays rather than cool grays and that kind of thing. Um, they're the, they're the, that's the information that's, that's sort of better to have, for sure. Okay. And once you get the hang of it, the knowledge is there. It's the co the pigments aren't going to change. You'll have that forever. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. I think I have all my base colors down. What, we got? what colors do people use on their drow? Uh, mine always have a purplish tint. Okay. Yeah. That's a good question. Um. I'm a fan of, if you're doing like multiple drow for a D&D campaign or something, I like them all have different, like different skin tones. Um, okay. So like same color family, so sure. they're all drow, but just like you would have slight differences in people having differences within the drow. That makes sense. Um, with whatever makes sense at the time when I'm doing it, that could change on a daily basis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this made sense today, but Flexible. Who knows? That's um, what you're talking about. Uh, I like using purples and whatnot with them. That that works. Cool. And it also solves my never mixing the same purple twice problem. Right. <laughs> That's funny. Did you? Uh, I'm not sure if you listened to my uh, interview with Josh for his uh, the Paintcast podcast. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think one of the questions was what what's your least favorite color to paint. And I said it was purple. It was purple. <laughs> no one likes painting. No for, one for exactly likes that painting same reason. <laughs> it, it's because it's so difficult. Um, like typically, if you've ever had to mix purple before, I'm sure people can agree with this. But typically, you don't get a vibrant purple. You get a very naturally yeah. kind of. I think that's the best way to like a desaturated purple. Yeah. And it's almost always too cool or too warm, depending if you've put too much blue or too much red. And uh, getting something that is a lot more vibrant, like the, the Magos purple here, uh, I would never be able to mix this. It just wouldn't happen. Um, I could maybe get close if I had several different blues and suffered several different reds to work from, but in like a typical painter's arsenal, yeah. it would just be a pain. <laughs> Agreed. Um, Agreed. Let's see. Any particular technique either of you use to simulate mud or dirt splatter? I'm a fan of actually taking my paintbrush and flicking it to get organic splattering. Okay. What about you? Uh, usually, if we're talking about um, like on boots or on legs, sort of, mm -hmm. it, as somebody's walking across their base, usually I'll try and put that in when I'm painting the base. So, um, it's not going to show up too well on here, but uh, the on the basing here, when I would go through and be doing the dry brushing, that dust or the mud would go up onto the, and just let it go up onto the feet. So if I'm painting like this, just paint the base and then a little flick up onto the, the legs. That's kind of what I'd do. If it was something heavier, like it was a heavier mud, then I'd probably um, stipple that on. Stippling works too. That, yeah, that stippling get works. Get that sort really of texture good. feel. So that's uh, I just, try to tackle that. Uh, at home, if I'm painting something, I'll just use like a piece of, uh, like a post it note to kind of block out anywhere where I definitely don't want it to go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then just, just flick. Right. Um, and then I'll touch it up if I feel like I need to. But if it's something that's supposed to be organic, then. Yeah. Splatters aren't controlled in nature. This is true. No, that's cool. That's a good idea. 
Um, <laughs> use a sponge. Purple's evil. It's the color of an evil football team. Careful, man. We're in Maryland. <laughs> Can't Vikings. say that out loud. The Vikings. <laughs> yeah. In Minneapolis. There we go. It's the Vikings. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> also, Dave, what colors have you been using? Uh, using a whole different um, different mix. Uh, so on my palette here, I'm just going to slide that there. So I have some uh, charred brown, some uh, glorious gold, some gunmetal. Uh, this I think is that's uh, Agrax Earthshade. I use that for the shading on the silver. This is uh, Gulliman Flesh, which is a contrast paint that I used uh, for the shading on the on the gold. Just gave a really nice kind of finish on the gold. Uh, some white. It's actually just called white. <laughs> uh, this is some warp lightning contrast paint, which I use for the the crest. Just painting that straight over white, which is nice. And then uh, some uh, coal black here is uh, from Privateer Press's range that I'm using for the sort of the edging on the the gold um, armor there, which I think looks really. Very cool. It, was, it looks really nice with um, a little bit of white mixed into it to give that kind of punchy highlight on it. Just like that. But yeah, so now I think I gotta, I'm gonna tackle the. Uh, what am I tackle? There we go. The um, strapping. So the detailed straps here, and then uh, highlighting that silver is going to be the way to go. But here we go. I am making my buff lady. Yep. All of her muscles are going to look super nice. Super nice. And flexed. Cool. Or at least I'm attempting to. <laughs> I, you don't get a lot of nice buff lady minis, so I feel like no. I have to do her justice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's something that um, the GW has been doing quite a lot of over the, the last uh, 12 months, 18 months, is adding more female minis to the range and, uh, and female minis in combat situations, combat focus models, which is cool. So I think most of the the war bands for, um, what do you call it? For Warcry are kind of a almost 50 50 split, male and female. There we go. I've been using kind of a rusty, not rusty, but like a purpley warm color for the shadowing to try to make her look a little bit more flushed. Okay. Cool. Neat. In the midst of battle. Right. That's cool. So we'll see yeah. how that turns out. Maybe it'll turn out. I was about to say, I think sure. it's, uh, you, you mentioned it 20 more? minutes and I, I wasn't sure whether I took up all of that 20 minutes talking about my projects. It's terrible. Jeez, Dave, get it. I know, I know. You gotta, you gotta make it, you gotta just. <sighs> next week, next week I promise to bring in no minis. Did you say no minis or new minis? No minis. <laughs> Okay, um, so Justin has, <laughs> has finished his, uh, his novice from Kingdom Death. So uh, we mentioned before, Justin's uh, one of the guys at uh, Titan Games and Hobbies. Um, looking great, Justin, very nice. Hmm? Yeah, the boots. The, the boots, boots are, are super cute. cool. <laughs> it's a cute mini. Yep. Actually, if you can go back to it for a sec. I was gonna say, look at the eyes. The eyes are fantastic. Yep, they have that little, uh, the little dot, a little reflective dot in them. Yeah. It's hard and to do. Very cool. Nice work, Justin. Very good. Jason Ooh. Sutton. Got a Griffin. Nolzer's Griffin. 
and Griffin from uh, from the Knowles's marvelous miniatures. But uh, yeah, looking good. I always uh, it's something about uh, like Griffin's always being in that the bald eagle kind of uh, color scheme. That's how I'd always paint a very, it. Um, a very American. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's just it's just very just a very classic. Uh, I feel like look. that's the type of Griffin you're gonna find in Minnesota. Right. That is a Minnesotan Griffin right there. You think so? Okay. I don't think that we actually have bald eagles. Maybe we do. We have bald eagles in Maryland. I thought for a second that you were going to say, I don't think we actually have Griffins in, in Maryland. I know. <laughs> I, I would go so far as to suggest that, yes, we, we, would, we do not have Griffins in, in Maryland. Dream a little. Yep. But no, looking great, Jason. And Jason again. A different Jason. Uh, Jason James is... What's that? Ooh, tips on painting the hair. Oh. Okay. Oh, I think I remember this post because it's longer hair than he's used to uh, right. painting. I would say do it similarly to how you did, uh, like, the, well, no, I think the texture on the fur was already there. But it's, it's similar to how you do short hair, um, I feel like. It's just you, you on those accent hairs, yeah. you just do a little bit longer. Yeah. I'd, uh, so I'd work out what you want your base color of the hair to be and the, the top highlight color. And then rather, like if you're normally used to highlighting with like two or three steps, mm -hmm. push it to like three or four or five steps and just very fine brush, um, paint, oh, paint the base color first, then highlight with that next one, highlight, 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 highlight. Patience. Yep. Um, so yeah, just, just taking it slowly, uh, working it up, and yeah, making each of those highlights smaller. And I think a, another great tip, following on from your um, reference photos, mm -hmm. hair is an important one to get to look at for reference photos if you want to get something spot on. And not being afraid to do blocks of color either, I feel yep. like helps hair, because a lot of people get tied up into doing strands and that's when you get like the spaghetti hair sure. or the ramen noodle hair when hair naturally clumps yep. together in segments. Yep. Uh, no, I so think that's a good point. Not, I've, being, uh, not being afraid of that. I've been guilty of uh, doing lots of spaghetti hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of that's from the sculpts. I'm going to yeah, blame it on the sculpts. Yeah, but, uh, but no, definitely. But little bits of feathering. Oh, no, there. feathering definitely. Like the accents and the little bits are, are all, all okay. good. Yep, yeah, definitely. Um, but yes, thank you for giving me that uh, mental image of ramen noodle hair. Just, uh, <laughs> Justin Timberlake does, hasn't done that for you already? Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen him recently. I mean, he, he doesn't he, return my calls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Carrier says, my dad likes to take pictures of my minis. That, that's super cool. That's awesome. And I think it's, it's great that he does. Yeah, it's very cool for us to, uh, to get to... To check these out, but yeah, this uh, this model's very cool. This is, I think, this is from the Private Deer Press. Um, oh, Grimkin uh, Army, which was released, I think, two Halloweens ago. But uh, yeah, very much a, that um, sort of horror kind of feel. It definitely has a horror vibe to it. That yep. is. <laughs> it's got a, it's, it's you look at it and it's, you're like is, it, is that flayed skin is it is it mummy is it wrappings mummy? is it skin it's a it's definitely a, a gruesome beast but I think you've done a fantastic job there Jason and your dad's done a, a great job of photographing All right Chris Hood is it Andreessa female wizard it looks great I move around like that because yes, we have that it camera. is a camera, camera in the way so we do the miniature viewing wiggle. I feel compelled to say oh. that every week, <laughs> to point out. Not that I'm um, being a bit crazy. But uh, no, looking great. I think, I um, good. yeah, the, the, the blonde, uh, the yellowish blonde hair there with the purple. Um, working with the purple is, uh, is looking great. And uh, I think the, the boots, the skin tone, the skin tone, the boots and the red all have that, that like an orangey feel. Mm -hmm. In them, so that choice of uh, the blue for that spot color on the on the staff is really good. Yep, very nice, Chris. Looking cool. Oh, Ooh. Simon Testa. That's fun. Yeah, these are nice. These are from um, Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. 
there's a lot of momentum, like in the one all the way on the our left. Yep. Um, just that whole sweeping motion. Yep, with the enormous leg bone, <laughs> the enormous femur. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're right. I think it's uh, it's definitely cool. I like the menace of the guy that has his arms outstretched that stretched there with the um, kind of the meat hook cleaver oh, yeah. kind of things. Um, that look great. But yeah, this is a uh, like um, oh flesh eater court. I think is the name of okay. the the um, is the name of the the faction in Age of Sigma, but. Uh, yeah, so this is the warband that kind of represents them. But yeah, those bats look great too. Lovely job, Simon. Well done. Oh, Jason Sutton, cleaning up a whole bunch of dwarves. Excellent. Dwarves look cool. Dwarves are always fun. That might be my bias. <laughs> are you just a, a dwarf fan? I do like, uh, yeah, actually I'm a fan of dwarves in, in pretty much every setting. But, That's uh, okay. Yeah, it's the um, they're not easily impressed. You feel they're, you feel a connection. They're pretty consistent. <laughs> they work hard. Drink a lot. Drink a lot. That was kind of my twenties, really. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I like them, and I think uh, Jason's done a great job on these these guys. I think uh, beautiful work, Jason. Oh, Brian, uh, is it, is it one angry grandpa and infernal horrors. Ooh. That's kind of wild. I like angry grandpa. Yeah, I'm not sure where these are from. But uh, definitely looks cool. I like the, um, again, it's kind of, a, it has kind of like a beast man kind of look to the, the one on the left. I wonder if these are both uh, privateer rest models too. But uh, yeah. Definitely looks looks nice. I like the um, those big black claws on the end of the the uh, purple limbs. Yeah, I have a feeling that's. I just want to say that that's Malifaux, but at the same time, I could be wrong. But no, looking. Uh, Dave, looking why good. don't you just have endless knowledge? It's all that drinking I did in the twenty in my twenties. In the twenties. <laughs> in, in the twenties. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of me in nineteen thirty-seven. But um, okay, there we go. Oh, here we go, Wyatt. Hope you're still around. Um, yeah. Uh, what do we got? So, yep. It's a new member there. It's on the side, Green Horde. But yeah, I love the um, the work on the wings there. Really brought out that texture on them. It looks uh, looks very cool. cool. It's a great uh, tonal contrast there against the the deeper red. I like the bone color used. Right. Yep. Not uh, not overly bright. Yeah, it, it complements yep. the red a whole lot. Yeah, I think you're right. Looks great. Nice work, Wyatt. Do, 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 do. Oh, Sean's been playing some Warcry too. First game. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. There's a lion. Yep, there is a lion. That thing is terrifying. What? In the game. <laughs> In the game, it's incredibly um, incredibly fast. It has a, a pounce ability, so it can kind of, if you roll the right dice, it can uh, like leap 10 inches across the board, and when it lands That's on you, it gets terrifying. like extra extra attack dice, and yeah, it can uh, it can tear apart like one of these regular guys in, in like one action. Yeah, it's fierce, but uh, yeah, looking good. I think, um, yeah, looking great. Very cool, and the, the terrain is fun, a lot of fun to paint too. Very nice. Good work there, Sean. Hope you're enjoying Warcry. Ah, who's this hack? <laughs> Move on. <laughs> there we go. And so we did. Yep. Oh, Chris Holdridge. Uh, so this is a converted um, Stormcast uh, Eternal model. So Chris is uh, converted into it in Auto Amalius Inquisitor. I like the glowy kind of cerulean blue. Yeah, yeah, it's looking really good. I feel like that looks really it's nice. It's kind of almost an otherworldly kind of um, ethereal feel about it. Yes, it, it looks magical in nature. Yep, but uh, now you've done a really good, really good job there, Chris. So Chris no, will no doubt be using this in some uh, Inquisitor Twenty Eight games as well. 
So, Charles has painted Tengu from Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid. <laughs> I love Power Rangers. Yep. So who's Tengu? I miss I Power Rangers. I don't know who Tengu is. Uh, I don't think it's from an actual, like, if you're oh, thinking okay. the original 90s, which isn't really the original, but the 90s Power Rangers, like, go, go, Power Rangers. I don't think that was in that. Oh, okay, radio. Yeah. Was that in the... Is this in the original original, or is this um, in the re more there's recent? There's a hundred different Power Ranger oh, <laughs> series, okay. and my expertise is focused on 1995. Go, go Power Rangers. <laughs> and yeah. uh, there was a space version uh, that my brother was obsessed with, and a ninja version, and a beast version. Right. Uh, and a dinosaur version. Okay. Um, but I don't know the current one. <laughs> okay, right. <-o. laughs> Thanks. Or where this one puts itself. I think uh, all I, when I'm sitting here looking at, at your tango, Charles. All I be, being from Baltimore here, you just need so you need to paint the uh, <laughs> paint the, it purple. Paint the top in purple, so it can be Poe, who is the mascot of the Baltimore Ravens. You don't have to do that by any means, but if you do. Here's Junebug, Junebug Minis, uh, Art of the Artists, um, which is, yeah, looking really cool. Nice, uh, nice work there. Uh, particularly loving the, um, the dragon in the top right and the um, kind of, I guess, more like dragonborn style of mini that's in, um, in the panel just above Chun's head. But yeah, looking great. Beautiful stuff there. Good work. Oh my goodness! This horde just continues to grow. <laughs> grow and grow and grow. Um, but yeah, these are all of his uh, mutants for Fallout. Fallout Wasteland Warfare. But yeah, looking good there, Robert. Very nice. That was it? Hmm? That was it? That's it. That's it? Man. Man. So many fantastic models. Thank you very much, everybody, for posting in the Penning Happy Little Minis Facebook group. More. Um, we are, I think we're currently at just over 1,450 members. Wow. And uh, when we get to 1,500, we have a special giveaway. They're really? Special giveaway. Cruising. Yes. So do everything you can to get us to that level. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be able to give it away. Of course. But we won't tell you about it until we get closer. Much closer. I was thinking two, maybe three. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you want to stick to one, we can we can do that as well. But uh, yeah, fantastic. No, thank you very much. It's always cool. As I said, I could I could sit here for hours and just talk about toy soldiers. <laughs> I just like painting things. That, that, I was going to say that silence was Gretchen saying, please, please, <laughs> please don't, please don't. <laughs> Absolutely fine. We all have our thing we can talk for hours about. Yep. Definitely. So how's she coming along? She she's cruising. Excellent. She's cruising along in the last of all these skin tones. And then she doesn't have a lot going on in the clothing department. So that shouldn't take super long. Yep. Uh, mostly just trying to get these skin tones both as smooth, but also uh, as bold enough to still need, to still see the shadows. Right, yep. Because I find that when you're looking all up close and you have like your face this far away, you're like, wow, that contrasts nicely. And then you look at it from this distance and you're like, oh. That's a little bit flat. That's flatter than I thought. Yeah. So, and she does have nice muscles everywhere, so I don't I don't want to make her lose her muscles. That would be saddening. It would be. It would be. When you mentioned the clothes there, one mm -hmm. thing that's um, kind of funny with the these guys, the uh, Iron Golem. The fact that they just have chainmail skirts on because nothing sounds more uncomfortable than a chainmail kilt. Well, in that. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned the um, the Stormcast uh, podcast 
where they talked with uh, Maxime about the um, the designs and the how they emphasize uh, different aspects of the um, the different warbands. Mm -hmm. uh, the Iron Golem are basically like the uh, the blacksmiths for um, for the Chaos warbands. Mm -hmm. And they want to make the best weapons they can, and they're all about the metal. <laughs> metal! Uh, so they don't actually have... The only clothing they're wearing is, is metal. Everything they wear is made out of metal. There's no... That's so there's, there's, unfortunate. There's no, there's no fabric underneath those chainmail kilts. That's so, so unfortunate. <laughs> it is. It is. Imagine the chafing. Pardon? Does that matter? Aren't they like monsters? <laughs> Aren't they like monsters? Well, it's all Do relative. Do monsters not chafe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They s <laughs> despite your despite your harsh words, they still feel pain. <laughs> so judgmental. But yeah, it's okay if you don't care about them. It's fine. Here at Painting Happy Little Minis. <laughs> painting Uncomfortable Little Minis. You have to change the name. <laughs> no? You don't want to do that? I think we should. Leona just never wanted to have to think about a monster chafing. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> to be fair, neither did I. We don't shy away from the hard topics <laughs> here. <laughs> I wish we I wish we did sometimes. Just sometimes, but yeah. No, that's good. All good. There we go. So Dave, do you yep. have plans for the weekend? Do I have plans for the weekend? Plans for the weekend. I do. I do have plans for the weekend. Um uh, so this Friday night is uh, Ghoul at the School. Oh. For my uh, my daughter's school. They have a kind of like a little little fair kind of thing. That's adorable. Um, where kids go along, they dressed up in their Halloween costumes, and uh, they get tickets and play games and win candy and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, so we're doing that on Friday evening. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to play a game of, uh, or a game of two of 40k at a friend's place, which will be pretty sweet. I get to use uh, my new Adeptus Mechanicus army that I haven't played with before. Excited about that. And then Saturday evening, uh, just near their school in the in the park is the um, there's an annual traditional uh, traditional lantern parade. Oh, that's fun. Yep. Which should be uh, should be super cool. So you get to either, if you enjoy marching in parades and carrying some sort of lantern, you can get to participate, or you can just sit on the the sidelines and watch. Oh no, nope, got gold all over this mini. That's okay. That's oh, fine. No, that's fixable. <laughs> it was it was on camera. Yep. Ah, Did I spell anything go. though? I ask you this. Not yet. I say, oh. I say yet. It's still time. <laughs> Gretchen, do you have any plans? Do I have any plans this weekend? Um, I did not have anything fun planned for this weekend. I The only thing that I know for sure I am doing am I am cooking chicken pot pies. That sounds exciting. Uh, <laughs> um... I am I'm cooking this weekend and I'll probably end up baking some treats uh next week for some Halloween themed treats? Possibly. We'll find out on Halloween won't That'll we? That'll be good. That'll be good. Well now that I've said that, they're probably gonna be part of my costume. <laughs> you know they weren't? <laughs> but now they will I was be. just gonna uh, yeah, I was just gonna make some some happy little treats, but uh, I don't know, Dave. I don't know. Well, see, because I've said it so much, I figured that I'm going to end up with some sort of layer costume. <laughs> and when you're talking about like baking things, <laughs> that I might end up stuck to the side of my head. 
like some sort of crazy uh, roll. Wow. Cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. Uh, yeah. Cinnamon rolls are fun to cook. They're also fun to eat. Popcorn rolls. All right, okay. <laughs> no. But yeah, I, I just planned to, to have a nice quiet weekend, uh, work my other job a little bit, uh, my, my boring job, and... Your muggle job. My muggle job, yeah. And then cook, you know. <laughs> Those are my hobbies. <laughs> that works. Um, I don't have any swords things going on, so. Oh, okay. Um, Boo. Yeah, yes, well. How about you, Leona? Um, I don't have plans. <laughs> I like how you say that, like you don't ever have plans. Like I thought she was saying, like, I did have plans, but not that I can reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Leona's actually going to meet up with me at a Michael's where we craft <laughs> your beautiful oh, costume. Oh, I see. Um, layers. It's layers upon layers. Of deceit. Well, we hope you enjoy your weekend anyway. I will. Cool. Yuna is det determined to do that. Maybe I'll watch yeah. a spooky movie while I uh, while I cook. Make it Halloweeny. I've decided that next year, next October. I'm going to try and watch 31. Oh. <laughs> 31 horror films that I haven't seen before. You know, my slasher film Albion might be out by then. <gasps> awesome. Could be part of October yeah. 1st. <laughs> Gretchen slasher film. October 2nd. Any of the pa uh, paranormal. What's that? Paranormal series? activity? Paranormal activity films. That's Probably the fun. first one. I can work my way through those. I haven't seen those yet. Have you seen Train to Busan? That's yeah. supposed to be good. I haven't seen that yet. I just finished that today. How cool is that? <laughs> During lunch. <laughs> How cool is that film? It was amazing. <laughs> yep. Definitely watch it. It was really good. I have been binge <laughs> so watching anyway. uh, Winona Earp. Okay. Which is... I believe based off a comic. I think you're right. Um, but it's basically Old West Buffy, if you yeah. want to boil it down to the bare bones. Okay, right um, But it's very fun. It's very fun. Um, it's been the right kind of spooky where I still feel like it's Halloween, uh, but I'm not watching something that's going to give me weird dreams. Okay. So, that's nice. And it's not going to, my boyfriend, he's not really into scary, per se, so it's the, the right type of uh, spooky to keep right, the Right, the right level of it. Yeah. That's cool. I have not watched that. I watched some of the, um, some episodes of Van Helsing. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Oh, I saw that Van Helsing that, uh, on Netflix. Yep. I think I'll have to... Go back and check that out. Yeah, Winona Earps, it's, it's definitely fun. I watched a, a fun one the other night, which was uh, Eli. Ooh, the Book of Eli? Not the Book of Eli. But it's a, a new uh, horror film on, um, on Netflix. Ooh. Which is, uh, yeah, it's just called Eli. It's about a boy who uh, is allergic to, like, everything. Not everything, but most things. Mm -hmm. So allergic to air and dirt and grass, that sort of thing. So he kind of lives in a bubble. And it's about how his uh, family try to help him out. And I'm guessing spooky things happen? Spooky things happen. There's a haunted house. Ooh. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, it was a lot of fun. Very cool. It had, uh, one of the actresses in it was um, from Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Yep. I can't remember her character's name in Stranger Things. 
But yeah, it was just a cool little pseudo cameo. <laughs> she had in it. But, uh, <laughs> what's that? Uh, Sarah recommends The Uninvited with Ray um, Milland. I can read. Uh, I don't need glasses. It's fine. Uh, Jason James says, The Penny Dreadful series, if you haven't seen it, absolutely amazing. I've heard great things about it. haven't seen it, but I've heard wonderful things. Yep. Um, Byron says, Charlie Brown. All right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we don't. I, I it typically enjoy a, um, horror films. I have to be in the right mood for them. Right. Um, but I do, I do like them. Um, uh, as I said, my boyfriend isn't really fond of them. Uh, so I typically, and I don't. I mean, I'll watch them by myself, but it's not as fun. Right. As like getting a group of people together. So anything that's actually scary, I tend to put on hold until I can have like a movie night with my other friends that enjoy horror movies. Right. That's, that's fair enough. That's cool. But yeah, as I've been searching around Netflix, I discovered that there are loads and loads and loads of horror films that I haven't seen. There are. Some good. Some bad. Many bad. <laughs> Would you have so far as to say most? Most bad. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Not everything has to be a winner. Have you found the Bollywood horror film yet? No, I didn't. I didn't go looking for it. I thought about it, but I didn't go looking for it. It's not bad. Comparatively. I might save that as a like a palate cleanser. I don't know, you might be disappointed. You might be like, man, now I know what horror could be. <laughs> what horror could be? <laughs> well, you, you mean that horror could be ruined for me? For <laughs> watching that? I don't want to do that. I got this little, little snake icon on the back here. I'm not sure what color to paint it. Yeah, I have it gold right now because I am using that as my mm. default. And also... Right. I am sucking at <laughs> keeping the cold anywhere where it should stay. Oh, ah, okay. Um, but. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder about that. So I just stuff on the shoulder here. What looks like to, um, like a, a, looks like Ooh. a snake bite mark. That's interesting. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Yeah, just at the top there. Oh, yeah. So it has like, there looks like there are two puncture marks. And then two lines. I haven't read the background about the the splintered fang, so it's possible that that's a sort of a ritual scarring thing that they do. But there you go. Another thing to discuss with the creators. <laughs> <laughs> In my hypothetical interview. Yep. I could just walk over at PAX, be like, hi, mm -hmm. you're not prepared for this, but it's happening. Yep. I think Games Workshop will be there, but I don't think uh, the, 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 the guys who designed these minis. Too bad. Games Workshop, be prepared. Maybe send them a list of questions beforehand. Nah. <laughs> no, they just surprise got them. a deal. <laughs> <laughs> um... Michael says, Verizon is going to love me this weekend. I am downloading a bunch of files for work. I'm going to use up 300 BG for gigs. what yeah. gigs? Just gigs? Oh, OK, gigs. just gigs. All right. Yeah. I thought they were fancy gigs. I was just going to accept that and move on with my life. <laughs> um, and then outside my normally, normal usage, I might hit the uh, 400 this weekend. I might wow. need to get the great pumpkin. Yeah, you would definitely have to download that. There we go. Man, these models are really cool. Five minutes. Very nice. 
Okay. Uh, oh, I haven't finished yet. Almost there. I decided I'm going to do the uh, the little snake icon on the back in the same green as the the hair. So I'm just going to run some of the contrast warp lightning over it. And then, because these uh, the splendid fang love their their poison. I'm going to thin this a little bit. Maybe add a touch of brown. Just paint it over the, the blade. Uh, can't quite see it. Uh, too subtle. Too subtle for the camera. But I think... Uh, Look that, it looked cool. It's that nice little, that's how you know it's poisoned. Oh yeah, you can see it now. Yep, so now, yep. Right. Much more intense. <laughs> and run that along there. There we go. So yeah, it's just a, it has a difference to the um, the rest of the Silver on the armor. I haven't oh, quite gotten clean. to touch up anything with all this gold I've accidentally spilled around the place. Yeah. Oh well. You'll be okay. All the base colors will be nice and. Yep. So now just mixed a little bit of a um, little bit of silver into the the gold for these final highlights on the gold. Just that little quick run. That's working well. Excellent. We always get really quiet when Leona says 10 minutes to go. We get focused. Laser focus. Three? Wow, it felt like you just said like 10 minutes, like two minutes ago. You lie. Lie. Liar. Okay, cool. I suppose I did do quite a bit there. Poisoning the weapons. Painting that little snake. Okay. Yoink. And there we go. What's this one called? This is the pure blood. Oh. Excellent. So they have a true blood, a pure blood, a serpent collar, the snakes, venom blood, and clear bloods. Very cool. Come on. Come uh, on. Right. <laughs> All I have to do is take something that is not gold right. and run along the edge of the sword, and then all base colors will be done. What is a good sword color? Oh, there not, we go. Yeah. I have some out of my palette. Just run that along and she will be based. Excellent. And have beautifully shaded muscles. Yep. Yeah, they're and good. Absolutely like nothing it. else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you've done a great job on the muscles there. Cool. I spent my time wisely. Yep. Well, actually, that's, that's a, a good point. Is talking about different um, and different miniatures. You don't have to spend the same amount of time on every part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so something that's going to be a focus, uh, in this case the muscles, spending the extra time on that is going to help the whole piece, um, and it gives you that additional contrast. Yes. Not everything is highlighted and shaded to the same levels. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think she looks great. Very nice. Cool. Hooray. <laughs> right. Everyone's decreeing their different styles of movie streaming. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Talking about that sort of fun. All good. All good. Okay, so um, as we said at the start, we have the Warcry, the Unmade box set. So these are the um, ones that are really super creepy. Yes. 
Yes. Very quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to pop it under the close cam there for a sec. See if we can get the, the close up. Yeah. Check that out. Oh, that's horrifying. So quick, last minute, hashtag the unmade. The unmade. Make sure you get it in. Uh, and we'll be picking that out after the show and putting up a post on the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. So join that too. Which is also where you should post a photo of your painted pumpkins with... You're on top of it. You're remembering everything. With a, um, <laughs> with a, a sign where you write the hashtag, <laughs> hashtag painting happy little mini, happy little pumpkins. <laughs> Almost. So close. So close. Oh. And then I fell at the end. That's okay. Oh well. I believe in you. It's a good thing we didn't do, the, uh, didn't do a run through. Like yeah, a well. Rehearsal <laughs> beforehand. That's how they know it's live. <laughs> That's it's how true. they know that we are here showing our authentic, non- Verbal communication? Yes. Okay. Non-rehearsed goodness. <laughs> it's true. <Yeah>. Excellent. All right. <laughs> okay. Cool. I'm done. Uh, are you? Yeah. In that case, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching here on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.